Well, hey guys, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel on this uh, wonderful fall morning. And uh, we've been having some good weather here, so I thought now's a good time to get out here and work on my Shepherd Wagon Vardo. And uh, I've done several videos of this now. I showed the entire construction process. I went through some of the hassles that I had getting this uh, so that I could uh, start using it again. And uh, I just put wheels on it. I've got it ready now so I can go camping with it. But now it's time to work on the interior. And I know a lot of people have been bugging me saying, hey, can we see the inside? Can we see the inside? Today you're going to get to see the inside and what my plans are because I'm just going to start working on the interior of this. So that's what this video is going to be about. Now, uh, this is a shepherd wagon. Some people call it a Vardo uh, or Gypsy Vardo. They are very similar in design and similar in use. A sheep, sheep herder wagon or shepherd wagon, as this was called, uh, was originally designed for someone who herded sheep or animals. They would take this out seasonally uh, and stay with their animals up in the mountains where they had good grazing uh, for their animals, and then they would come back to their home. Now, some people lived in these full time, okay? And then if they were lived in full time, generally they were called a Vardo because that was a type of house on wheels back then, all right? Now, if you're interested in the plans for this, the plans for my sheep herder uh, wagon Vardo are available completely free on my website. Go right here, simplesolarhomesteading.com. On my website, you will see where it has this Vardo camper where you can download the plans completely free. While you're there, why don't you also check out some of my small cabin plans, uh, tiny house plans. I've got small campers. I've got tiny houses on wheels. A lot of different plans on there. All of my plans are very affordable. Uh, in fact, most of my plans are only $5 for a full set of plans because I want to make them available for anybody that wants to build any of these projects. Uh, and you can build a tiny house, an A-frame, a cabin, whatever you want from those sets of plans. All right, so go look at my website uh, and you can get the plans for this and look at my other project plans. So today what I'm going to be doing, first thing I need to fix this door uh, because my door is kind of swelled and is jammed, so I'm going to fix this up. But on the inside here, you can see I've got this, I bought this uh, base cabinet. It's actually a desk I got at a uh, yard sale for $5. But I'm going to cut that down to make a countertop kitchenette uh, so I can prepare a meal, wash dishes, or whatever. So that's one of the things I'm going to be doing in here. And I'm going to take you inside, and I'll kind of show you around what I'm going to be planning uh, for this Vardo. Now, this is my plan for how I'm going to use it. You can do whatever you want in these, and I will show you that I designed this uh, so that you can modify it in many different ways to fit your needs. So let's go inside, and I'll show you what I got going on in here. Okay, guys, so here we are inside of my uh, sheep herder wagon. And uh, so, you know, I made this out of plywood. Uh, everything is glued and screwed. All of the framing, flooring, everything has glue and screws, so it is tight. That's how they build airplanes. Okay, so this thing is extremely sturdy, and I'll show you the roof, how I did the roof here, uh, because this is set through two winters now, and I don't have any leaking whatsoever on the inside of this. Now, this is my bed platform that I'm sitting on, and I designed this specifically so I could use it as a couch, so I can sit here in the mornings and drink my coffee, uh, and also as a bed. I made mine, which I'll show you here, I made mine 30 inches wide uh, for a uh, cot size mattress. Uh, which is very comfortable for one person. However, if you want to, you can raise this up. You can do a larger uh, twin size or even a full size mattress. You would still have room to stand in the front of this. I'm only going to be using this by myself. And so I put this down here uh, at couch height level and I'll use a cot mattress that I have that I'll take along when I go camping. So that's how I did mine. And I've got storage underneath it. It's so about a foot high. So I've got storage underneath this for all kinds of camping gear and stuff like that that I don't want out in the middle of the floor. Now, what I've got to do is I'm going to be building a, uh, I'm going to be building a small kitchenette cabinet in here so that I can prepare food, wash dishes and whatever, store utensils and stuff like that. So I'll show you what I'm going to do here. Okay. So I got this, uh, it's actually a desk. It's in real good shape. It's like, a, it's probably particle board, uh, but it's got a walnut finish to it. Looks really nice. Paid $5 for that at a yard sale. Got a real good deal on it. But it's too wide and it has back legs on it. So what I've got to do, because this is raised up uh, about a foot, what I'm going to have to do on where it has to fit over this platform, I've got to cut this leg off and I've got to cut back here in order to slide this back over uh, this shelf that sits here. 
And then it'll be slid back right against the wall, and that should still leave me at least one or two drawers here. It should leave, still leave me two drawers, and I think that I can also adjust this and use this other small drawer, move it up here, and I think it will fit over the shelf. So that should give me two drawers on this side and this long drawer for utensils and stuff like that. So that should work really nice. So that's my next project here is I'm going to cut that down. Now on the other side, I'll show you. Okay, so here's that bed platform, like I said. Mine I uh, set for a 30-inch bed. You could do a 32 or 36-inch bed or even a full-size, and you would still have room. Even with a full-size bed, you could still have room to stand out here. This is only 8 foot, a little bit less than 8 foot long uh, because it's, uh, I had to adapt it to my trailer, and it is built uh, probably about six foot four inches wide. So it's wide enough for even a tall person. I'm only about five seven, but it's wide even enough for a tall person to sleep in it just fine. Like I said, you could raise this platform up if you wanted to do the Vardo style and sleep up above it and have room underneath it. That would you could even make a desk and whatever you want underneath there. I'm not going to do that. I do have this side room over here. I do have this side room over here. Now, I had plans to maybe put a small wood stove in here. I still haven't decided. I don't think I'm going to put a wood stove in here because I'm only going to use this seasonally. I do have a wood stove. I do have a wood stove, which you can see out there, uh, which if I can take the legs off of it, it's possible to use it in here. Uh, but the way it is, I can't really put it in here because it would take up too much room. And like I said, where I'm only using this seasonally, I probably am not going to use a wood stove in here. I won't be camping in it in winter. Uh, and you can see on the other side of that, I've got one of those big buddy heaters. If I need heat, I can always hook that up with some propane and use that for heat in here if I needed to. So here's a different view of this. Here's a different view of this uh, counter that I'm going to be using, this desk. And I'm going to cut it off so I can slide it back onto that shelf. And uh, here is kind of a view. And here you can see a view of the uh, roof. And I use 2 by 3s on the roof with OSB. And then the entire roof is covered with uh, sheet metal uh, that overlaps all the way around. And this is sat for two winters without even a single drip in here. It still looks really good. Uh, and I used a barn style roof. If you wanted to, you could do the round roof if you prefer that, uh, Vardo style. I used the barn style roof because it was my own design and it was easier and I could put the OSB up here on it uh, because at, because what I had planned on doing is probably putting some solar panels. If you're going to put solar panels, it's easier to put those on a barn style roof than it is a round roof. So that's why I went with this. Uh, and then the window, you can see there, shed. All right, this window... I got on Amazon. It's actually a shed window. It does slide up. It does have a screen in it. Looks like I need to clean all the fly specks off of it. It's kind of dirty uh, from being sitting in here. Uh, but this, these small windows uh, for sheds work really well for a Vardo. Not too expensive. You can get them on Amazon. All right, so now my next job is i got to cut this uh, desk down. I'll slide that back in, and I'll show you how that looks, and that'll give you some ideas for how you can set up a small kitchenette in your uh, Vardo or your sheep herder wagon. Okay, guys, so I've been doing some work. I cut the back legs off of this, trimmed it back, and I got this uh, desk set in here now. Now I can use this as a cooking top table, put my dish pan on it, wash dishes. It's got two drawers on it, so I've got drawers for the utensils. And this one over here, uh, this drawer here I'm going to have to adjust because this uh, uh, plate where it sits up on top of it is a little bit higher than where it should be, so I'm going to have to do a little adjusting on that one. This drawer here won't go in. Uh, because it sits up on top of this, but I can cut this back. What I'll probably do is just take the front off of it and make a false front and just glue that right to the front of it there so it looks like there's a drawer there at least. So we got that, but here's something that was really, really interesting. Really, uh, I wasn't expecting at all. Uh, I got this old desk I said for uh, $5 at a yard sale, and uh, it works perfectly, fits in there just great. But when I went, up, went to get the drawers out, because I had to cut the drawers back, uh, somebody, a child, uh, back in 1997, had, and I'm, I'm guessing it was probably uh, a young girl, and from the handwriting, I'm not going to really uh, show too much of this, but from the handwriting, I'm guessing maybe about 8 or 10 years old, uh, got a love letter uh, back in 1997 from a boy who was apparently uh, smitten by her, and she must have stuffed it underneath the drawer to hide it probably from her parents like we used to do. And I thought this was so cute. Now this is written on that old brown paper we used to get back when we were in school. 
Now this was in 1997, so that's 27 years ago. If this girl was eight or 10 years old, she's in her mid thirties now. When this love letter uh, from her little boy admirer in school wrote to her, and I won't give away any names or anything like this, but I thought this was so cute. Uh, and apparently, uh, her name was, I'll give her first name, first name was Jennifer apparently, and this was from, uh, it just says BS, I don't know, that's his initials probably. Uh, it says, remember that it's 247, I'm at your desk, hello. Then it says, I love you, uh, and uh, sorry sloppy, sloppy handwriting, uh, your bestest, bestest friend. Isn't that cute? And we probably all had little letters like this, and this was probably her desk back in 1997, and she hid this note underneath one of these drawers to keep her parents from knowing that she had an admirer, or maybe just to save it so she wouldn't lose it. But that was inside this desk underneath the drawers when I got it out. So I thought I'd share that love letter uh, from some kids back in 1997 with you, and I thought it was real cute. All right, so now I'm going to fix these drawers uh, on this to make sure that it uh, looks right and these drawers will shut correctly. Uh, and then we'll move on to the rest of the interior of the Vardo. Okay, so I've managed to get these uh, drawers cut down. And isn't this cute? Look at this. I turn this uh, small one. Uh, it'll be This will be my uh, seasonings drawer. So I can put my salt and pepper shakers and everything in there like that. And that fits in there perfectly. Like so. This middle one I had to cut back the shelf to make it work. So it's a little bit shorter in the back. But now I've got a big shelf there for all kinds of stuff I can stick in that. And both those fit in there. Nice. They're pretty. Where it's supposed to be and I was able to save all four of my drawers uh, for my uh, kitchenette cabinet. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I did mention that uh, love letter. And it got me thinking about, well, who did I have a crush on when I was uh, eight, ten years old? And I remember the girl very well. I'll just give her a first name. Her name was Dana. She's a local girl, another country girl here, raised up kind of like we were. And boy, did I have a crush on her. She was pretty and uh, also smart. And uh, probably smarter than I was <laughs> at the time. She did really well in school. Uh, and it just so happens that uh, I ran into her. Or I should say, she contacted me when I was running my pest control business, when I moved back out here after being gone for almost 20 years. She contacted me to come do a pest control service at her house. And I noticed that her last name had changed, uh, but I knew who she was. And I showed up at her place to see if she'd recognize me. And yeah, she called me intentionally uh, to get back in contact with me. And I came out and did a pest control place. But while I was there, I got to talking to her and she married... Uh, one of the guys that we went to school with, I knew him really well, uh, and we were friends, so she married a really good guy, and uh, they've got like three kids now that are in their teens, because, you know, we're older folk, and uh, we, she gave me a big hug, and we, we had a good talk, good long talk about being childhood uh, friends. I don't know that she ever had a crush on me, but I can tell you I certainly had a crush on her. So anyway, that old love letter from that child I found in this desk brought back some memories of my own childhood crushes. All right, let's get ready to do some more work in here. Okay, guys, so I got this uh, cabinet all done, cut back, drawers all work, everything works. So I've got drawers for utensils, drawers for bigger stuff down there. Even got a spice drawer down here. Uh, and so that's going to work out excellent. Now, I'm just going to show you how I plan to use this when I'm camping here. Now, at first, I thought I might put some shelves up here. Shelves would probably be a bad idea after I thought about it because if you're traveling with this, anything on the shelves is going to fall off and be on the floor when you go to open up your door. So instead of that, what I got is these dollar store uh, shower caddies, which you can get for real cheap. And they're just perfect for putting in things like canned uh, vegetables. And I got my espresso sauce in there. And uh, you can even hang them up. If you have them hang them up higher, you can put your coffee cups on the hooks because they got hooks down here. Those work really excellent. They're cheap. Uh, I will keep an eye out for maybe a uh, cabinet that will go up here. Uh, but for now, though, I think that's an excellent way of using that space. And then I'm just going to put some screws up here for things like my spatula and stuff like that. Knives and things like that that I want to take along with me. Again, this is going to be used, my primary use would be for camping. But if somebody wants to come stay on my property, stay on my property, they may be using it for a longer term. So some other appliances that I really recommend, and I've done video reviews of these 
if you want a good look at them. Uh, this here is the Dash Mini Griddle. I absolutely love this thing. I use it all the time. Uses only about 300 watts or 350 watts, I think. And if you want to cook stuff like uh, a single egg for a guy or pancakes or small waffles or stuff like that, this works excellent. And I'll show you how I run these in here. And then these uh, little grills like this. These only use about 700 watts. And you can get them in all different brands. Now, I will put the links to some of the products that I recommend down there in the information if you want to go and look at the products on Amazon you can but here with this here you can make hamburgers you can make sandwiches you can make everything else and it only uses about 700 watts now how I power this instead of using instead of using propane appliances because propane is kind of expensive anymore uh, and having to go down load up propane bring it back and carry a tank with you I use electric appliances and I run them off my power station which I show you down here Okay, so right here is my Geniverse power station. I'll lift it up so you can see it. And they make all different brands and types of power stations. I really love these because they're portable. Uh, you can charge them up at home, and then you can bring them with you when you're camping or use it for an emergency backup system. If you want to use a battery, I'd recommend a LifePo 4 battery, and you can use an inverter. But these charge up really fast. I've got solar panels, which I've showed you before. I can charge this up from my 100-watt solar panel while I'm out adventuring, come back in the evening, and it's completely charged up and ready to run everything. And this is my fridge over here, which I'll show you. And then this is my fridge, and I use these 12-volt uh, or 110 volt fridges. Uh, and I really love this thing. I've had this one for about three years now, done reviews on it. I don't remember what brand it is, but I'll put it down there in the comments room and go look at it. But these are excellent because they only use about 45 watts. And it, will, it will run off the power station I have for about two days, maybe, maybe even longer. And the power station will also run all my other appliances for cooking and stuff like that. And in here, I've got Van, uh, who's my good off-grid friend. He's coming up uh, probably this weekend to check out what I've been doing on the camper. So I've got some uh, double cheddar. I've got some double cheddar uh, brats, and we're going to cook those over over the fire pit uh, when he comes up. And then I've got, of course, my cold beer in here. And these fridges actually have quite a bit of room. Uh, you can get them in different sizes, so if you've got a larger family, you may want to get a bigger one. This size, like here, this will last me three or four days uh, with all the groceries and stuff I want to put in there, steaks and everything else. And again, that just runs off of a uh, power station, only pulls about 45 watts, only runs for about 15 minutes an hour. So it will last a really long time off of just a power station. Okay, so people have asked me about, like, what about washing dishes and stuff like that? Well, I've got this handy shelf here, and you can get these uh, wash tubs. Uh, like any dollar store, and then I've got my uh, I've got my dish soap, my Ajax, some sponges, and uh, this here is a chemical for a chemical toilet, which I'll talk about here in a minute. And I just keep all that in this wash tub, and it nice conveniently slides underneath my uh, kitchen cabinet right there. Now this bucket right here, I'll explain what that's for. Okay, so this bucket right here. This is my shower, because people always ask, well, what about keeping yourself clean? you got to bathe or shower or something like that. Uh, so what I do is I have, this is a two-gallon bucket, which you can get just about anywhere. And here I have a shower kit. And inside this kit, this has a, and I've done reviews of this, this has a shower head and a rechargeable, so it can be recharged from a power station. It lasts a long time. It'll last you a week of showers. Got a rechargeable power uh, a rechargeable battery in here. You just drop this into the bucket, hang this up outside, and you can take a shower. And two gallons of water is plenty for a plenty for a shower off. You can also use this to wash your dishes and stuff. After I wash them, what I used to do is set this up and rinse them off really good uh, with some warm water. You can heat your water on a on you can heat your water on a heating plate or outside on your campfire. So those are really good units for campers and they work really well. This one actually has a hand remote on it so you can turn it off and on as you're showering. I really like that. And then, and then the other thing people always ask me about is what about going to the bathroom? Because if you're uh, not, if you're not camping someplace where they have outdoor toilets, you may need to take a toilet along with you. This is uh, what I got. This is a toilet bucket lid. Uh, this is made by Camco. You can get them on Amazon. Again, I'll put the links down there. All you need is like a five gallon bucket. Then you put the lid on, which I'll show you here. Then you got this lid, and it's designed to fit right on a fat five-gallon bucket. It's got a little clip on the front here. I'm to get it off, and you can sit on that 
on a five gallon bucket. And then they also include these biodegradable sacks. These things here, you put that inside the bucket to catch any waste. Then whenever you get to a convenient place where there's a dumpster, you just throw the whole bag in. That's perfectly legal. Throw the bag into the dumpster and you're done with it. So there's your toilet. All you need is a uh, five gallon bucket so you can see how it works there. And uh, these are on Amazon so you can get these. And that takes care of your toilet needs. Now what I do is I set the five gallon bucket out during the daytime. The only time I bring it in the camper is when I want some privacy to do my business. Do my business then I set the bucket back outside. However, however, if you're concerned about smells maybe inside your cabin, get you a bottle of this at any RV place or any place that smells camp, sells camper supplies, something like this. This is the uh, TST Max. Uh, it is completely it is completely biodegradable. It is an RV uh, chemical toilet treatment. All you need is a small amount, one little cap full of this. Put that in that five gallon bucket. You won't have any smell or anything like that. If you don't want to use this, then you can also use sawdust. You can also use sawdust or sphagnum moss or something like that in your toilets. Even the leaves will work to cover it up and keep the smell down. But this stuff works really excellent. I get this, it costs me like $7 and will last me for years and years. And I use it in the cabin and my composting toilet in there. All right, all right, so I have shown you my setup, uh, my bed. Now you can see that I've got this whole space over here that I haven't done anything with. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna wash these yard shells. I'm gonna try and get another desk like this one over here. I'm gonna put it over on this side. That will give me more cabinets and spaces, and I'll probably put some shelves and stuff above it. And then I've got some room here that I'm probably going to use uh, for putting my fishing poles and maybe my hunting rifles and stuff up there when I'm camping so I can take those in and out as I need to, have them available. So I've got all this room still left over here. I've got me a kitchen, I've got me a sink, I've got me a shower, I've got a wash basin, I've got a fridge, I really don't need much else in here. I've got a power station. I can charge up a solar power so I can charge up any appliances, gadgets, anything like that. So I'm in good shape for camping. All right. A van is going to be coming over this weekend. We're going to cook up some brats on an outside fire. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and watch us and we'll just, and stick around and watch us and we'll just kind of enjoy a campfire outside of the Vardo here. All right, folks. Have a great day.